Did you know that 100 out of 100 people are suffering with subscriber phobia? So if you hit the subscribe button, you're cured. Hello, gaities and gentlemen, Savage Tea Drinker. And in this series, we're taking a fresh level 70 character and attempting to get Keystone Master without any help. The class was chosen by my community in a poll, which was Windwalker Monk. I'm going to give a quick brief on the last few episodes. So in episode one, where it all began, we did our first few keystones in LFR, and we ended the week at 300 score and 439 eye level. Episode two, we got our first vault, which was tear shoulders, and then we stacked our vault full and got to 449 eye level and with a mythic plus score of 1327. Episode 3, we got a 476 axe from our vault. We caused some mischief in a 4 key, which is still hilarious to this day. We ended the week at 458 eye level with 1751 score. And then in our last episode, episode 4, we got a shiny pair of new boots on the myth track eye level, 483. We did our first 20 key. We smashed out 260k overall, which is our highest yet. We ended the week on 464 and 2099 score, so we're closing in on our goal. Will we conquer it this episode? Who knows? Well, I do, but you don't, so get to the watching. A little rundown on what's going on in this episode. We try our hand at our first 21 key. Will it be as smooth as our 20? We have some non-believers in our eye level and our monk and our gaming prowess, but they instead get schooled. And we have our first actual deplete in the series, so I guess it can't all be smooth sailing. So potentially the last vault of the series. Potentially. I was hoping for a better trinket, as we are still rocking the Fang Auction House trinket at 439 eye level. Be sad to see us replace that trinket at some point. I might as well take this character to 4k Rio and get cutting edge with that trinket, as it has become a part of our identity. As you can see though, we did not get a trinket, but did in fact get another weapon from the vault, which is an upgrade over our previous axe. So now we can have a max eye level weapon, but we will ultimately replace this in the future with Rashon, the spear from the raid, because that weapon is busted, or if we get thorn callers also from the raid. I am being super lazy with not doing the raid. I find pugging in general for the raid quite time consuming, but thankfully Blizzard has made gearing through Mythic Plus and getting crafted gear way easier in Dragonflight. As we did a 20 last week, because we are gamers, we got a 20 thrown of the ties from our vault for this week. So I thought, let's just start the week and hopefully have a smooth run like last time. It did take a while though to get the group going, I will not lie. I did start encountering people who would just join and then just dip straight away after looking at my gear. Or they'd end up making comments like this, but they don't know the untold potential this character has. We went to do the first big bloodlust pull at the start, so we get bloodlust back for the second boss. But I guess because we didn't directly clarify this to our shaman, who I picked up from the group finder purely for his lust, and to kind of see how elemental is, because I love elemental. Can you guess? He didn't press it. The rat in the party was 486 and the shaman was 480. Me being me though, I did want to try at least be competitive even though there was quite a big gap in our eye level between us and not some little side piece brought along like a... If you couldn't tell with these first two packs, I was really trying my best to beat out these guys. Actually peaking 700k without an augmentation evoker. And yes, of course, we are pressing touch of cheese but it is a part of our rotation, right? We do end up slightly trolling here. I had the healing debuff on me still as the tank was pulling these mobs. <coughs> and I got a little trigger happy. So I end up getting one two'd by the witch. It's entirely my fault. It doesn't end there though. I see the tank moving towards the three casters. So I start <coughs> winding up my serpent kick and just fly on in there. But I end up ripping aggro off the damage from serpent kick, which if you play Monk, you know it's nothing meaningful at all. And at the same time, the Ravager, which I thought had died, 
did one last cast behind me and just fired her on top of us, spreading her poison load everywhere. So I end up going down again and the tank takes a little pop shot at me, which is kind of understandable, but then I didn't really think I was going to get aggro on them originally. I think his aim was to pull the casters without the dog circling around, but because we are in a pug, people generally don't communicate and they're not going to read your mind, Mr. Tank. So then it was on to the little lady Najatar, which went pretty smooth, but right at the end, our shaman friend wanted to have a quick shower before the second boss. <coughs> now, cast your mind back to the bloodlust dilemma at the start. So as you can see on the timer, we would have had it up for the second boss if we pressed it on the first pull. But do you think our shaman friend pressed it now for this boss? Oh hell no! No, he did not. I waited for nearly 20% of the boss's HP to go before I popped my own drums, and this annoyed the priest, not sure if his anger was directed at me, or at the shaman, or at both of us. And on top of that, our <coughs> shaman friend does <coughs> die on this boss twice. Definitely not his day. Outside <coughs> of clearing trash with a few deaths, the next notable thing which happened to me was me mixing up my keybinds for the teleportation jutsu. So I had already put a clone behind the plant up to LOS the fear, so I was thinking 10 steps ahead. But, instead of going to that clone when the fear was being cast, I instead made a new clone directly underneath me and got evaporated. Despite us trolling, the rest of the group finished the boss and we made pretty quick work of the last boss as well. <laughs> so even with the silly deaths, we had enough damage to squeeze out a plus two even. Got an extra 84 points, which is huge, and that takes us to 2183, so just over 300 points to go now. And to make things better, we touched up cheesed our way to top damage, beating out the 486 Paladin, and we schooled the Shaman, who had zero faith in us when we were making the group. Pussio, you're a pussio, get away. Now we attempt our first 21 key, which is an easy one. It's a black rook hold. The bosses might be a little spicy as it is tyrannical, but Monk has pretty good defensives and everyone else is geared and knows what they're doing. Surely? It's not possible to get to a 21 keystone and not know mechanics for encounters, right? Again though, we were having issues getting people into the key. They all just didn't believe in us and we end up getting back to back people joining and leaving. We did the normal bloodlust first pull things and just defeated the first boss straight away as it is a training dummy. I'll take this time to go over the affixes this week as most of our dungeons did have them all in. Firstly we have tyrannical which increases bosses HP and damage. So for instance the last boss in this dungeon is going to crush our HP with the shadow bolt volleys. Second, we have Storming, which summons tornadoes, which circle around and knock you up if they hit you. It can be hard to dodge mechanics if you do get hit by one, as it leaves you vulnerable in the air, so you just need to be careful. Lastly is Raging, which makes mobs immune to CC at 30%. This can be super problematic, like with the archers and scouts upstairs, as you normally want to stop their casts to save your group, but you will be unable to without dispelling the enrage. Second boss died, and we definitely didn't die as well. <coughs> and the rest of the key went really smooth, there was a few deaths here and there, but the real story of the dungeon was the end. So as you can see there, there's one boss left, 11, nearly 12 minutes left on the timer coming into the room, surely it cannot go wrong from here. <coughs> That's just a little taster. Hunter died to god knows what in phase 1. The tank didn't taunt the boss on my death and instead was typing when the boss was coming in. That's not even the worst part. You're going to see the hunter go down again after the first volley. This ends up just being a recurring nightmare. The hunter did in fact use lust right away and he may not know that phase 2 lust is better so I did explain to him but that did end up causing a wipe. We try again, the paladin dies to the beam, I don't understand how. And remember how the tank didn't taunt because he was typing last attempt? Bruh. Yet again, another wipe because he did the exact same thing as last time. But somehow we actually managed to make it through phase 1 with no deaths, and the hunter does not press anything 
for the volley and gets one shot. Why? why? I wonder why he doesn't press anything if he dies to it each time. You have to wonder. Why'd you do that? I do end up going down later on because we lack the DPS on the swarm. <clears throat> I then also get another res and I die again to the swarm later in the fight. And the rest is just a beautiful piece of art of how the human mind can melt away in World of Warcraft. We do end up completing the key and the hunter admitted afterwards and he said sorry that he didn't know that he was supposed to press anything for the first volley. Really? What is your stance on people not knowing mechanics? I feel like at least 20 and above you should have a good idea of every mechanic for a dungeon. I know this season was way easier in terms of getting score and pushing keys, but it does make you question things on what people actually know. We got a lucky 2222, pretty good number, and we move on to the next key. We move on to a 20 DHT, and going off the last two keys, you can't be having a hard time in each dungeon. That's just not possible, is it? Well, Sunny Jim, it is. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the first pull went good. We cleared up to the double bear pack where I get yeeted like Leonardo DiCaprio by the fifth <coughs> bear shout in Revenant. We lose our healer pretty quickly into the first boss fight, so we end up wiping, and then we end up going again, and the same thing happens, the healer dies. And on the second attempt when we wipe, we just move on to the next dungeon. So, short and sweet, right? Well. Maybe not sweet, but short on something. You can think of the word. I was pretty defeated after the last few depletes. So I went to key levels which I knew we could do and had success in the previous episodes. Yes, you did see that correctly. We did in fact deplete another key straight after that DHT, which was a 15 fall. But at that point, I just got pissed off when I depleted. I could not sleep until I had timed something. I'm not fucking leaving! So we went straight back into another 15 fall. And that wasn't looking too hot either, as we did wipe on the first boss twice. Not once, twice. To people not soaking their pools after he leaps. Why? Why? It did make me pretty worried, as that would be the third depleto in a row. But... That did not happen, I promise. This episode is not just a deplete fiesta. I promise you, and that you've been debated into thinking that we cannot get Keystone Master. As you're seeing, we did smash through the rest of the dungeon, I didn't lie to you. And kudos to the others sticking around to finish after our disaster of a start. Good job, team. I really needed to see a plus something amount of number added to my score at the end for my own mental. And... We did top damage, which was also a nice little booster for my morale. And that took us to 2269. We had success with the fall on 15, so we went to a Waycrest Manor on the same key level. Waycrest was going to give us the biggest jump in score, as we had only actually done a 5 on Tyrannical and a 10 on Fortified. So major gains if we do time this key. We did. In fashion. Yeah, baby! I honestly sent so many keys this week trying to pick up score, as we are so close to hitting that juicy achievement the whole series has been about. On a few of these bosses in this dungeon, I was absolutely popping off. I was incredibly happy with how my triad boss damage was. I sometimes see people in my shaman's keys doing this amount of DPS for this boss. We did get slept though by the tree boss, not sure how we pulled that grow. Maybe we're just blasting too hard. That's gotta be it, right? Moving on to the big boy. Raul! We did 225k single target, and that definitely isn't padded by the ads. Please don't check the logs. We broke up the corpse's bride wedding downstairs, and then we made mincemeat of the little gremlins on the way down to the final encounter, and we demolished him too. We got rid of Gorak Tool just like the BFA writers did. Get wrecked, mate. This dungeon gave us a massive amount of score, plus 85, and that sets us on 2354, so less than 150 score left. We are closing in. That is our fourth dungeon completed for the week, so now we have a chance of getting a trinket from the heroic box. Bruh. Unfortunate, we are never getting a trinket on this series. It's over, it is ogre. Memeing aside, 
we uh we did get an upgrade there that is a hero track gloves so they are now swiftly going to get changed into a catalyst piece and then that means it can replace our champion track gloves as you saw we were in a group and that group was for a 70 in a towel the only notable thing which happened which made me laugh was the paladin on razan ended up getting chomped twice um, num, num, num. you think he has horse bob bubble so how did he die to it twice beats me um, num, num, num. the rest of the dungeon was free a couple of random deaths here and there but as most of tal desires go plus two baby and that gave us plus 23 so definitely not as fat as the plus 85 in waycrest but progress is progress and we got an extra ring to give to someone special that is you the viewer enjoy the ring now we do have two Everblooms coming up. One is a 14 and the other is an 18. Because that's all we could get invited to after the 14 key. Feels bad. So I won't show too much of the 14 because that is too much green to look at back to back. And even Snoop Dogg would be in trouble. I thought they were choking on cum. We end up pulling this guy as no one really likes playing with him anymore. Poor dude. Pretty smooth dungeon. There was a few deaths here and there. I got lashed by the lashes on the first boss. Dungeon master. Council got slapped up. And part of our party got orbital nuked by the arcane mage. Practical nuke incoming! Our paladin companion, I think, has a weakness for mages and spells, similar to Superman and Kryptonite. He goes down twice on this boss, but we do finish her off. And that's a phrase I can't say often. Then moving on to the last boss. No one dies and we steamroll this ugly centaur looking creature. We gain 56 score, which takes us to 2439. We're so close. Now we go again on the 18 in this cursed green place. And even though the key level was four levels higher, we only had a singular death in the entire run. Was it me? Find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Each boss went down like a sack of spuds. Three down. Council down. Mage down. Hunter down? Huh? See, it wasn't me. I didn't let the side down. Just before the last boss, we were missing 0.33% mob count. I'm not sure what we missed in our pulls, but we ended up pulling this random stinger afterwards, which I had never seen before and I didn't even know was there. And apparently these guys had done this before, so maybe I'm the one who's the weird one? Have you seen this little stinger before? I would like to know. Afterwards we brought down the centaur again, and we managed to even beat out the 481 paladin, who is also 3k score, so we don't even need to push the 3k if we're already beating 3k players, right? We got plus 41, which takes us to 2480. And that's it for this series, guys. Peace out. I kid, I kid. We've got one more dungeon to go. Or is there multiple dungeons still? Or is it next episode we complete the challenge? Too many possibilities. And if you skip to the end, you cheated. And you'll forever have depletes in your future keys. So do not do that. I understand. We shredded the first pack down with ease. Tried boss, we absolutely popped off on again pulled out our witcher sword and just went ham we knocked out little treebeard in the courtyard and as smooth as the start was going it was cut short sadly the priest went offline and then he just never came back you got, you got your just kidding the wow overlords tried and failed to stop us and we kept on moving once he came back we killed dr disrespect's favorite character raul and moved on to downstairs where the overlords struck again. This time it was for real though, we actually had to stop the key. Get pranked for the second time, losers. He comes back again from the dead and we finish Lady Waycrest and Mr. Waycrest. Then it was moving on to Gorak Tool, the main man himself. And anticlimactically, he fell over and we did it. 2500 pretend KSM achievement popped up below because we can't actually get up to this character. So that's a feels bad, but I'm going to put it there anyway. We got plus 29 points. 
So we breeze past 2,500 with some spare points left over. And that takes us to 2509 to end the series. It's been a pretty crazy journey with ups and downs. And overall, I'd rate Windwalker 8 out of 10 to play. I've had some good fun on this class. I can see why people play it. We didn't get the 1 million DPS challenge completed, but we were close on a few occasions. If you did find the channel through this new series, then let me know in the comments and tell me what class and spec you play. I'm always curious on what people are playing and having fun on. After completing the challenge, we ended on 2509 score and 46569. Nice. And as bonus footage, we did in fact get a trinket in the following vault on Wednesday after we completed the challenge. So I guess it all worked out in the end. Really hope you enjoyed this series and I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for watching. And of course, special thanks to the Patreon homies. Your support is amazing and helps build this channel to even bigger heights. Have a great day, everyone.